Hey everyone, it's me again and welcome to Faith's Faces. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Faith Grenade and I put makeup videos here on YouTube. And you should subscribe and hit that little bell icon down below. It'll notify you every time I upload so you don't miss a minute of this riveting action. Can you tell it's super riveting around here? Today you stumbled across Faith's Faces, which is a get ready with me or a makeup tutorial like we have going on here. I'm super excited because you guys know I've bought a bunch of fucking palettes in the last God knows how long. I bought so many palettes, so many palettes, and I need to start using them. Today we are messing around with a palette I'm really excited about. This is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Alien Palette. I saw the packaging, I flipped my lid because it's like so cute. It's got the big alien eyeballs, the, you know, cylindrical shaped head. It's freaking perfect. And it's so on brand for him with the hot pink. The font is fantastic. Got the logo down here. And then you got a little spaceship on the back. How cute is that? I totally lost my mind over the packaging. And when he um, released the color story for this palette, Dear God, I got even more excited because I am so sick of the same duplicate palette being released by every single brand ever. And part of what I love about Jeffree Star is he releases the stuff that is different. He puts out unique shit that nobody's ever put out before. He put out a black highlighter, a jet black highlighter. This man does not give a fuck about convention and I absolutely love it. You know, it pushes the boundaries. It pushes me out of my comfort zone as an artist. It forces me to really kind of work my brain to figure out color combinations as opposed to just being plug and play, which there's a place for plug and play. I think, you know, when I have somewhere to be or, you know, when I have an event to go to, it's nice to just be able to like, put this here, put this here, put this here, and there's a look. But when I'm really trying to grow as an artist and when I'm really trying to get better um, within my craft and like hone my craft, I want things like this. You know, I want things that push me. I want things that say, no, we're not gonna be straightforward and like easy to manage. We're not gonna be super user friend, like beginner friendly. You're going to push yourself out of your comfort zone and you're gonna figure out, you know, great looks to put together with these unique ass colors. I did use this palette in the look today. The thing was I noticed when I was looking on Instagram and, you know, YouTube at what few looks I could see of people using this palette, everyone used the same colors. Everyone was essentially creating the same look. They were using the greens in the palette and they were using the purple all together. And that creates a really beautiful look. But at the same time, I was like, I'm tired of seeing the same look over and over again. I'm going to create something different. So I did use a couple of shades from this palette, but I cannot say that I used the entire palette alone for this look, just because I wanted to create something different than what everyone else was putting out. So I made this look today. It combines, you know, I challenged myself to combine two colors that I never would normally combine, colors that I didn't think would work together. So I had this idea in my head of gray and yellow. I just wanted to combine gray and yellow. And so that's what I came up with. I definitely use this palette for a bulk of this look. I also tossed in a few other things here and there, but this video is gonna be really, really informative, you guys. I'm teaching you how to create a look with just one shadow. I'm teaching you about structural balance and about how visual balance in a look can sort of, you know, take crazy color combinations like this and make them look very cohesive and all other kind of stuff like that. I'm really excited. Um, and if you want to see how to get this beautiful gray and yellow alien as fuck makeup look and learn you something, then just keep on watching, baby. Uh, and I am going to start with Titan. Uh, this guy right here, it's my skin tone, basically. <laughs> um, and I'm going to dust off my Sonia Kashuk 109 that still has a little bit of the nice color on it. Um, but I'm going to use this to sort of set from the crease to the brow bone, because when you're doing a really simplistic look that doesn't use a ton of color, it's really important to blend those colors very, very nicely, because obviously it's going to be a lot more apparent if you don't. So we're just going to move that 
into the crease all the way up to the brow bone and that's just going to set any tackiness that might be left over on the primer so we don't run into any issues with blending not that i did um on this eye i didn't really have any trouble blending at all everything blended really nicely but moving along i'm gonna go into tall gray which is this guy right here and this is our main color this is what really ended up going all over the show so it's going in the crease, it's going on the lid, it's going on the outer corner, and you can create dimension with it by just going heavier on the outer edge, fading into the lid, which is what I'm gonna do. So I started on the outer edge, really moving in kind of soft circular motions, and you wanna lighten up as you get to the crease because we're not trying to create something super heavy, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna swoosh that and as you run out of product, start working into that crease. And you can see that when you put something flesh toned or the color of your skin tone uh, into the crease and the brow bone, it just sort of helps fade that color a little bit. So now that that's out there, I'm gonna start to carry it over the lid. And I know this isn't normally the brush you would do something like this with. Normally you would reach for a packing brush to really get full kind of opacity but I'm almost working with this with the intention of turning it from one shadow into three. So it's doing the duty of a lid shade, a crease shade, and an outer corner shade all at the same time. So as I run out of pigment on my brush, I'm just gonna start working over that lid and that's gonna create a very light wash of gray over the inner part of the lid. So it's actually going to give the illusion that I've put on three different colors of eyeshadow when I only used one. Now, the one thing I will say that happens with this technique a lot is a little bit of patchiness, and that's not necessarily because of the quality of the shadows. The quality of the shadows is fine. It's just when you're putting on a shade with one of these brushes, it wants to travel because the bristles are nice and spaced apart and they're very fluffy. So they're gonna make that powder travel a little bit further and fade a little bit, which is gonna end up creating some patchiness. So you're gonna end up having to work a little bit to build um, a smooth opacity on the lid as you lighten up, but it is possible. And if you wanted to, you could use like a Real Techniques base shadow brush that's a little bit flatter. So you have that sort of paddle shape to work with when you get into this step of the process. And this is gonna be a lot easier for somebody with a cooler undertone to their skin. For me, my skin is yellow. So I have to really work quite hard to blend gray colors because they don't naturally fade into my skin tone. Okay, now we're gonna deepen things up just a teeny tiny bit on the outer edge and I'm gonna take Black Hole, which is uh, a black, really. And it's a beautiful black too. Really, really nice texture. Doesn't build up too quickly. And I'm just gonna pat this and sort of sweep it on the outer edge just to deepen that up just that little bit more. You can skip this step if you're going for a more, you know, daytime editorial look, or you're going for something a little bit softer. I just wanted this to be a smidge darker out here because I have such deep set eyes. I wanna create a little more dimension, but it's like a hair, you know? I do not do black that often. So we're being very, very judicious with our black. We create a little counterbalance because I have some like big brightness going on on the inner corner and the lower lash line. I wanted to create a counterbalance on the outside. So we're playing with sort of balancing weight. So you've got nice and dark out here to kind of counteract the nice and bright in here and bring balance to the overall look. If that make, how many times can I say if that makes sense? You guys get it, you're smart. So now I'm departing from the Alien palette for a little bit. Um, rest assured, I will be using this again um, and creating a look with the entire palette, but I was really inspired um, to do this kind of look and it just popped in my head and I was like, I need to get this out on my face like immediately. So I'm gonna take uh, from the Melt Cosmetics Radioactive Eyeshadow Stack, I'm taking the shade Neon, which is a beautiful bright, bright yellow. And I'm gonna take that on a sort of, this is an old ass elf brush from their $1 line. Um, but it kind of reminds me of like 
a pencil brush but thicker and I'm using this to blast my inner corner and my lower lash line with this bright yellow. I mean, explode it. Just press it on there because this neon shade is a pressed pigment. And there's a difference, as we've learned from people talking about the um, Morphe and James Charles collab palette, we've learned that there is a distinct difference between pressed shadows and pressed pigments. These are much, much stronger, but they're much dustier, if that makes any sense. So um, they can be a little bit tougher to blend. They can be a little bit tougher to work with. They can go a little patchy on you. So it's important to press that shadow. Really blast that thing out. And we're creating sort of a triangular shape here and then we're going all the way across the lower lash line. Just explode it, just everywhere. <laughs> this is a completely optional step because I know this palette is dumb expensive, but I wanna use it because it's dumb expensive. Um, this is the Viseart uh, Le Grand Pro Volume 2, obviously. It's so beautiful. And I'm gonna take this duochrome shade right here, this yellowy one, it's a yellow duochrome with kind of a teal flash, and I adore it. I adore it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that on that same brush if I can find it again. I literally just set it down. Where did it go? There it is. So I'm gonna take that same brush. I'm not using a mixing medium for this for now. Um, you can always pull a mixing medium in with these pigments. It makes them work a little bit better and a makes them a little bit easier to move around uh, and get to full opacity. But for now, I'm just going to blast that into the inner corner, very inner corner here. And then I am sort of carrying this over onto the lid a small bit, just barely tapping it, just enough to get a little of that shimmer onto the lid. And you can see when I do that, maybe you can't, I'll show you in a minute. When I do that, this color transforms. It becomes a kind of tealy sparkle that just sets over the lids just so beautifully. And it doesn't really show much of that yellow at all. It just becomes this teal shimmer that when set over that part of the eye, just completely transforms that shade into something a little bit more unique. I love this palette for that reason. I mean, this palette is not for everybody. This palette is for makeup artists. That's who it was marketed to. So you really have to know how to manipulate these textures in order to use this palette to its fullest extent. However, don't be discouraged because Viseart has some great resources in terms of like instructional videos and stuff like that, teaching people how to use this. I'm gonna dip into a mixing medium. I am gonna use a mixing medium just to see, cause I haven't used a mixing medium with this yet and I wanna see what it does. So this is the Esom uh, mixing medium. This is from Muse Beauty Pro. And when you order this palette off of Muse Beauty Pro's website, it comes with this mixing medium included, uh, which is kind of cool. So it's got a little card that comes with it and I'm just gonna use that card. I'm gonna put a drop of this mixing medium on the card because you don't wanna put this mixing medium directly in the eyeshadow pan because then you'll get hard pan that way. And we do not want hard pan, no siree. So I'm just gonna put a drop and even that's a lot. I'm just gonna put a drop of this mixing medium on this little card here I'm gonna take a clean pencil brush and I'm just gonna dampen it. So the drop's right there and I'm just gonna dip it into the corner of that little mixing medium puddle and sort of rub it off a little bit because you don't want this to be soaking wet. You want it to be damp because when it's soaking wet, that's when you run into hard pan, when you put something that's really, really wet in something that's really, really dry. So I'm gonna pat that off on the back of my hand just a little bit, just until you get that dampness not totally wet, not totally dry. And then I'm gonna dip it into the bottom corner of this shade, just in case I do get hard pan. Although if you do get hard pan, there's a way of fixing that. And I can teach you guys how to do that in another video. But I've got my product loaded and I'm just gonna put that, whoa, <laughs> holy 
holy shitsies. Okay, okay. Hello, gorgeous. Yeah, you can see that that definitely explodes this shade. I'm gonna move on to lashes and mascara. No liner for me. Um, I typically don't use eyeliner. Um, not terribly often, anyway. But I am gonna put on some mascara and lashes. When it comes to mascara, use a tried and true. Use one that you know is not going to smudge because if mascara, you know, if you're wearing a light color like this all over your lower lash line and your mascara smudges, it's gonna be super visible all throughout the rest of the day, which is not a good look, um, or at least not one that I'm going for today. Y'all know I love my grunge, but today we're trying to control where that color goes. So really use a mascara that you know is not going to move. Um, I have my Urban Decay um, Perversion Mascara in my purse, so I'm gonna pull that out and use that. For lashes, I'm keeping things pretty simple. I think I'm gonna go with the Ardell 113s, these guys. I'm covering up the name because it says Lacy's on the name, but this is not a pair of Lacy's. This is a pair of 113s. A little bit on the full side, but not too thick because we wanna keep that balance intact. So I'm gonna put those on and then I'm gonna go ahead and do my foundation and my face makeup and stuff. And then I'll come back to put on some lips for you guys. Okay guys, I'm back and I'm feeling super flawless if I do say so myself. Really like the way the complexion came out today. I used a lot of the usual suspects, not a whole lot of major change here. Um, for my foundation, I used the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Hydrating Foundation, which is my favorite. And I combined that with the Cover FX Power Play Concealer, which is rapidly becoming my favorite concealer ever that I have ever tried ever of all time, ever. Um, Vizzy Art Setting Powder. Uh, I do dig that stuff. It can show texture if you're not careful with it. So be judicious as with any powder, um, but I do like it. It sets my makeup in place very well and keeps it there throughout the day, which is what we want from a setting powder. After all, um, made sure to set my little smile line right there. Um, yeah, Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, the usual there. I used one of the balms in stained blushes. This is in the shade Argyle. It's a nice light baby pink. I like it because it's not too much. So for a makeup look like this that's really focused on the eyes, um, and I'm wanting to do a softer, more kind of toned down complexion, I tend to lean toward Argyle because it's just the softest little baby pink and I can just take a tap of it, run it over the cheeks just to make my skin look a little more skin-like and a little more 3D. In highlight, I went a little in and I used two different highlights. First, I used the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Highlight 01 just as like an initial highlight to bring a sort of matte dimension to the, you know, upper dimensions of my face. And then across the cheekbones, I went with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amreezy highlight to add that little bit of extra shimmer. When it comes to lips, I could go a, di a couple of different directions with this, and I'm not really sure what I want to do. I could go gray. Um, I do have this gray lip from Wet n Wild. This is called London Skies. This is from one of their Halloween collections. I could totally do a gray lip with this and have it be totally wonderful looking. I could do a black lip with this to add some extra contrast. Um, I don't have a yellow lipstick. Well, I do have a yellow lipstick, but I don't think I would use it uh, for this look just because I feel like that would take too much attention away from the eyes. You could totally do a nude with this. I could see a deep purple, but it'd have to be like a blackened purple uh, going really well with this as well. But I don't know. I'm going to mess around with a few things and see what I come up with. I may end up just going black because a black lip is very safe for me. It's kind of like my security blanket, but I don't know. I have a bunch of different lipsticks uh, at my disposal here. So I'm going to look around and figure out what I want to do, but whatever I end up doing, let's do that now. All right, y'all, it took a bit, but we figured it out. Um, I actually have to give credit to my daughter, Taryn, for coming up with this. For the record, if you're new here, no, Taryn is not my actual birth daughter, nor did I officially adopt her, but she is my adoptive daughter. Um, but I call her my daughter because she's 
much, much younger than me, but I sort of ended up taking her under my wing and turning her into a little makeup wizard weirdo. Um, she's amazing and she is so, so dumb talented. Um, she's an esthetician as well. We went to school together and she's so talented. I'm going to leave her Instagram down below. So go follow her. I basically Snapchatted her because I had put this particular lip on and I wasn't sure how I felt about it. So I took a picture on Snapchat and I sent it to her in a snap and I said, what do you think this or black? And she was like, I like it. And I was like, okay, I will go with, I will go with what you say. So this is the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche Lipstick in the shade Squid Ink, which is a deep, dark, saturated, rich navy blue. And you know what? I don't hate it. I mean, it's, it's not like completely homogenous, so it doesn't match the eye makeup exactly, but it works in a really strange way. It's kind of like, you know, it, it complements and plays up the eye makeup without taking too much attention away from it. The eye sort of circulates the face very smoothly and I dig it. It was kind of awkward for me at first because, you know, this goldenrod yellow and blue were my elementary school colors. <laughs> so it's like, oh God, I'm back in elementary school again, which not a great time in my life, but a great color combination to wear on the face. So. This is the finished look. I'm really happy with it. I think it's weird and crazy, which is exactly the way this Alien palette was meant to be used. Even though I didn't use that many shades from this palette, I really, really like it so far and I can't wait to play with it some more. I just wanted to do something that was different from what everyone else was doing with this palette. But without further ado, the thing I always forget to do, let's do some awkward posing. Awkward posing looking down, looking forward, looking fierce. That's about it for me today, you guys. I hope you found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining. If you did, there's a button for that. Spank that like button in the butt. You know it deserves it. And if you wanna see more from me, you've got a couple options now. You can click the videos on either side of my head to binge if you're border bummed out, or hey, you can hit that button that looks like my face and subscribe and become a member of the faithful today. I put out new videos every Sunday. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and joining me today. And I will see you in the next video. Toodles.